Chapter 4, The Spring Splash Mona and Tilly followed Henry downstairs into the kitchen, which was nestled between the Hartwood's roots. The Hartwood Hotel had almost as many rooms below the earth as it did above. Mona loved them all, from the penthouse suite at the top to the hibernation suites in the deep dirt. The kitchen was one of her favorite places. It was the gathering place for staff, which was no surprise, since the air was always filled with delicious smells like roasting acorns and gooey cheese crumble. Miss Prickles was always there, too, bustling about, baking up batch after batch of her famous seed cakes. Although you couldn't hug Miss Prickles, she said she baked a hug into everyone. There didn't seem to be any hugs in the kitchen that lunchtime, though. Only crossed arms and tense tails. Gillies, the front desk lizard, was sitting in Mr. Hartwood's spot at the head of the table, wearing a badge with an M for a manager on it. Beside Gillies was Mrs. Higgins and her husband, Mr. Higgins, the gardener. Tony was there too. Guess what? Guess what? cried Henry. No guessing required, said Gillies, adjusting his badge. You can see him right here. Little badge on. Looks like a serious fellow. We all know while Mr. Hartwood is away, I'm in charge. As you keep reminding us, Mr. Hartwood obviously needed a break, said Mrs. Higgins. His decision making wasn't cl was clearly suffering. She frowned at Gillies' badge. I'm good at taking breaks, right, Tilly? piped Henry. There will be no time for breaks, the lizard said excitedly. Spring is usually a steady season, but we will make it bustle. We will show Mr. Hartwood that he can take a rest without worry. We are the most wonderful hotel in Fernwood Forest, the only hotel. No, we're not, burst Henry. There's a new hotel in Fernwood. Gilly's tail switched, twitched. A new hotel? What do you mean? Rumble came by, Mona hurried to explain. He said there's a new hotel opening up, a splashy one. He heard it from some birds. Gilly's tail twitched again so hard this time that it knocked a platter of seed cakes from Miss Prickle's paws. The seed cakes fell to the floor with a crash. Mrs. Higgins sighed at the mess. Are you sure, she asked Mona. Mona shook her head. Um, actually, no, ma'am. Bramble never, Bramble's never had the best memory. But then Tony said, I heard the same news from a passer by, passing messenger Jay. All he told me was there's a new hotel still under construction, but supposedly it will change the flow of Fernwood. I thought he was trying to rile me up, but maybe not. Should I go find out some more? You mean spy? said Henry eagerly, grabbing a seed cake from the floor. Henry, scolded Tilly. Gillies interrupted. We are not spies. We have standards. Standards we must not lower but raise. Should we send a message to Mr. Hartwood, Gillies? said Mona. Gillies shook his head. Of course not. He's only just left. We must take care of it ourselves. Splashy indeed. We'll show them splashy. What do you mean? What do you think they mean by splashy? Like fancy. I've always told Mr. Hartwood that the spring needs more zing. The Hartwood hop is too much like the acorn festival. It needs to be hoppier. I don't know. The Hartwood hop sounds like fun, replied Mona. If you like hopping, said Henry, spitting out some seeds. Hoppings for rabbits. Games are fun. Henry hushed, said Tilly. And what did I tell you? Chew before chatting. Gillies heard Henry, however, and his eyes gleamed. Games, that's it. Not just games, competitions. Things that guests can really sink their paws into. A whole season of them. The snow sculpting contest in the winter was a start. But there's so much more we could do. A party to end all parties. A spring splash. We'll show them. We're the greatest hotel in Fernwood Forest. And that's a fact. Mrs. Higgins shook her head. I don't know. But Gillies was turning a vibrant green. I like the word vibrant. That's definitely a triple scoop word. Everyone, come on. Let's get in the splashy spirit. I need ideas for competitions. I've got some. I do, Mr. Manager, sir, said Henry, bouncing off his seat. Gillies glanced down at his badge and grinned. Wonderful. I think he likes being called manager. Henry beamed. Told you I can be helpful, Tilly. Because us extra work... Caused us extra work, more like, grumped Tilly, but she rubbed her ears proudly. Mona felt a knot in her stomach. Usually she was the one with ideas. As Henry hurried up to help Gillies with his list, Tilly leaned over to Mona. I'm glad to see Henry so excited, said the squirrel. This is all a big change. At Hood's home for orphaned animals, there were lots of kid kits like him. Actually, that's what I was going to tell you, Mona. I need you to switch rooms with Henry, please. The knot in Mona's stomach tightened. Why? Turns out Henry's not quite ready for his own. 
even though Mrs. Higgins did clear out her sewing room specially. But there's only space in our room for two. Just think, no more silly, noisy squirrel snoring, Tilly teased. Your snoring's not that bad, replied Mona. I mean, you do snore, but I was hoping to go through some of the old guest books with you tonight. I found them today, and I thought we could read them together before bed. I'm hoping to find... Mona didn't even have a chance to finish before Tilly squeezed her paw. Your parents. Maybe they wrote an entry. We'll find time to go through them, she said. Even if we're in our different rooms. Then she added, as long as this whole splash thing doesn't get too crazy. Did I ever tell you about the time we had a bat birthday here? Everything was upside down. Like, actually upside down, she huffed. Mona smiled and squeezed Tilly's paw. But Mr. Hartwood gone. A new room. A spring splash. Mona help, couldn't help but feel upside down herself. It had nothing to do with bats and everything to do with a certain little squirrel.